Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and iOS 18 is not that far off. Six months from now, we'll see it for the first time at WWDC 2024, where Apple typically shows off all the next iterations of its operating systems. This time around, iOS 18 is set to get a major redesign according to Mark Gurman, or at least a major upgrade in some big ways. It doesn't necessarily mean they'll redesign everything, but there's some hints already in iOS 17 that we could see some of that. So I thought we'd go over 10 features in changes to make it great according not only to what I want, but also what you want based off of what I asked on YouTube. I asked many of you on YouTube what you would like to see with the next version of the operating system, and after 331 comments, we have pretty much a consensus in a lot of different things. So I thought we'd talk about that, take a look at some great ideas that some of you have come up with as well a little bit later, but first let's go over the top 10 things I think most people want to see. The first one is stability iOS 16, iOS 17 were riddled with bugs and still are at this point. This is very unApple like and since iOS 6, while we got a redesign with iOS 7, we've seen quite a few bugs and many more than we expect from Apple. Things such as wallpaper dimming bugs, just little odd notification bugs, little things here and there with sometimes even cellular data not working properly, and much more that Apple's just had to fix over and over, including iPhone 15's overheating and much more that they've recently fixed. So that's something I think many of us would like them to focus on, and that seems to be the number one thing most people mentioned in those comments. The next thing is split view. I think many people have wanted this for a long time. We've had it on the iPad for a while. So if we go over to the iPad on the iPad, if we go into Safari, we have split view and you'll see the Apple watch series nine and Apple watch ultra are available in the USA again, at least for some time. But if we swipe up here, maybe we want to bring in weather. We can bring in two apps at once. We can even overlay one over the top of that, rearrange the size and more. It's already built into iPad OS, which is essentially iOS. Apple would just need to customize it for iOS and make it available for split view here. There's no reason they can't do it. I'm not sure why they haven't yet, but many people have asked for that. So we could text at the same time. Maybe we were watching a video on YouTube instead of just using picture in picture. The next thing many people have wanted to see is a redesign. Now this could mean many different things. Some people want specific parts of the OS redesign. Many people want a full redesign. Now, personally, I would like to see them at least make the icons consistent with what we have with Mac OS or the upcoming vision OS, give it a little bit more depth, get rid of the flat design. Some people have even said, bring back skeuomorphism. So that's something I don't know that everyone would want, but just bringing back some sort of different design where we could also maybe change up the way it looks, change the control center, maybe make that look a little different. And back on iOS nine, it looked different as well. So here's an iPhone six plus with a skin on it running iOS nine. And you can see they changed it from the one on the left. They changed it again, then changed it to what we have on the right with iOS 17. So many people have just wanted some sort of new iteration of this design to make it maybe more consistent across different devices, have a different customizable control center that isn't as messy, maybe more organized and much more. That seems to make a lot of sense to me. And I personally would love to see that as it just seems to be something that's been stale and old at this point, since it's many years old. The next thing, which I think surprised me quite a bit is many people want to see Siri updated with better context, which isn't really a surprise, but maybe bring in AI to bring it up to the levels of chat GPT. They want people to be able to use Siri just like you can with chat GPT, having AI fully integrated. And this is something Apple's already dumping billions of dollars into and said, don't worry about it. We're not behind. We just haven't released it yet is basically what they're hinting at at different interviews and things like that. So they're hinting at those different ideas. And we definitely could see that in the future where you would activate Siri, maybe use it to define something on a page, summarize something, what we're seeing with Android, but also Microsoft with windows. We'd like to see that brought not only to iPhone, but to iPad and also Mac, but Apple will do it in a private way. So they don't have to send it out to servers. And there's recent patents around that where they could do it on device. So it's never leaving your device to be served somewhere else. So if they can actually integrate that sort of AI level, I would welcome it. I don't really like my information being sent off my device constantly to figure that out and then stored somewhere. So I think that's a great way to do that. The next thing I saw most people wanted to see is to allow you to organize your home screen. However, you'd like, if you want just a few apps and you don't want one right after the next in rows, you should be able to place them wherever you want. This is something we've had on Mac OS for quite some time. We've had it on many other operating systems, but for some reason, Apple hasn't implemented it on iOS. 
pass. There's not really a reason they can't technically, they just haven't done it. So if you move it over here, move it back to here, it shouldn't sort of snap into place. You should have the option to sort of just place them wherever you'd like. That's something I think many people would welcome. You could of course use what we already have, or you could change it up. The next thing is many people want more widgets. While we keep seeing more and more with this latest widget for weather from Apple, many people are wanting more apps to have widgets, maybe more interactive widgets, different varieties of them. And I think we're seeing that it's just being very slowly rolled out. I only find that I use one. I typically use the weather widget and nothing else as I don't want it using a ton of power either, but it's nice to be able to see the weather quickly. Let me know your favorite widgets in the comments below. The next thing I'm seeing from many people is they want an updated keyboard where you would go in, place maybe whatever you're typing, but also have the keyboard have the number row at the top at all times. There's definitely room where they could slide this up since we've had larger phones for a while. We could have that number row key here at the top or maybe even a redesigned keyboard altogether. Also, it's accuracy isn't great with things when you're swiping or quick typing or using quick path as Apple calls it. But if you use Apple, it's pretty accurate, but certain things just don't pick up properly. The haptics of it sometimes aren't great. And just in general, the autocorrect isn't great. They updated the algorithm with iOS 17. We'd like to see this modified again. So just bringing it up to speed with maybe Gboard or something that's a little bit better, but as secure as something we have on Apple. The next thing has to do with settings and settings is something that I sort of like, but I don't at all in many ways. So if we go into settings here, let's switch over to dark mode within settings. It's fine. We have a bunch of settings, but we have to go into say the camera app to adjust our formats. We can't do that in the camera app on the iPhone itself. So there should be a settings button here, whether it brings us right back over using that swipe method or maybe just a quicker way to get into them. I don't see why they can't integrate those settings directly in the apps themselves, instead of having them all in this huge long menu where we have everything else. This is the way Apple has done it on Mac for years as well, but on Mac, at least in some apps, there's a separate settings option or preferences option. So I would like to see them bring this more to a consistent way across different apps. So we just know exactly where everything is. Also, many people want to see better wallpaper management in particular, if we go into wallpaper, many want an area where we can have all of the old wallpapers along with maybe a section where we could add our own and not just have it with suggested and more where maybe we could go through and see all the classic ones from iOS 17 down to iOS six and maybe older. We could just go into those and maybe swipe through, pick what we want and continue from there. That's something I would definitely welcome to see more of the wallpapers brought back, all of the live wallpapers, everything else, and then a section of our own where we could keep a bunch that we really like. I know many people have wanted this for years and I think it's time Apple actually brings it to iOS. Another thing makes a lot of sense and that's a copy and paste clipboard. If we go in and maybe we copy and paste something, we want to copy whether it's a web address or URL, or maybe just a word here, such as iPhone 15. If we wanted to do that, copy and paste it somewhere, it would be great to have a separate app or maybe a pull down window, maybe a quick note that we could swipe in where we could see maybe up to five different ones that we've copied before. So we can grab those and then paste them somewhere else. There's third party apps in Mac OS that allow you to do this, but on iOS, it's a little more tricky to do that. So I would love to see that integrated directly into the OS. We have copy and paste and all of those different things, but we don't have a clipboard for it. So we could get multiples at once. That's something I would love to see. Now going through all of your comments, there was a lot of really great ideas. So I thought we'd talk about some of those next. The first one is from Richie Domenis who said a dash cam mode is something I would like to see get integrated into the camera app. So you don't need to use a different app or camera to record accidents. Also incorporate the GPS coordinates, speedometer, date, and time, etc. I think that's a great idea where if you had this on a mount, whether it's MagSafe or just sort of a clamp on your dashboard, go into your camera tap dashboard mode, maybe it would require it to be plugged in while it's doing that and be able to record during the time you're driving. It would know that you're driving, just tap dash cam mode and then turn it into a dash cam. I think that's a great idea and maybe something Apple could integrate. Now, many people put multiple ideas that they had, but I took one from each one of these comments. Francie Rooster said full integration between files and music to add music to Apple music without needing a Mac. I think that's a great idea. If you don't want to use Apple music and subscribe to that, being able to to just plug in and use it with something else. Dump that over from files would be great. Also, the next one is really great. 
from a salted fruit guy, I would love to be able to schedule a text message just like you can with email, Would also love a smarter Siri. So being able to schedule a text message, go in, maybe you want to text someone later, or maybe just a reminder within that text message or something along those lines would be super helpful for a lot of people. MDAFT Abalon 7683 said call recording. I hear this every year that people want call recording, but I don't think Apple will ever add this due to different laws around the world within the United States regarding being able to record calls and more. While I think I would like to have that feature if you really wanted to have it, I don't think they'll ever integrate it, but they should at least open it up so third-party apps could do it if they'd want to allow it. But right now, Apple's pretty locked down on that. I don't think they're going to ever unlock that. And speaking of locking, lock individual apps via Face ID, photos, messages, contacts, etc. I see this a lot, and Apple has integrated this already into things like Journal and the Notes app and Photos. There's not really a reason they couldn't put it across all apps if you wanted to do that or just select a group of apps that you want locked all the time. I think that's a great idea and something Apple should add eventually here. Also, the next thing many people want to see is cover flow. So if we go back in here, you'll see that Rave Days says, please bring back cover flow. I miss that so bad. Cover flow I absolutely loved on iOS 6, where you could go into your music, go into an album, turn sideways, and just swipe through the albums. Steve Jobs actually showed this off on stage with the introduction of the iPhone. There's no reason we couldn't have it now, and I think Apple should bring it back. I think if Steve Jobs was still there, we probably would have had it all along. Gorilla Tag 9602 says, being able to change the two buttons on the home screen, the flashlight and camera button, this wasn't my idea, but I saw it from a video. I think that's something I see requested the most as well, so if maybe your phone is locked, you tap on it, Let's see if we get it not to show face ID. You've got your two icons here, camera and flashlight. Being able to customize this just like you can the action button would make a lot of sense. Whether that's a translate button or maybe even a shortcuts button. That makes a lot of sense. There's not really a reason they shouldn't do it. They just haven't yet. Now, the final thing that many of you suggested was the ability to search contacts using your phone number. That's from a Lorica, and you'll see ability to search by a phone number in the phone app like Android does for years. I think that's super helpful. And while I don't use my phone app or the function very often on this, going into that, typing in a phone number and having it bring up a contact just by putting in different numbers would be super helpful. Start the phone number off with the area code or country code, and it should start to bring up people that are relevant to that number. That would be great to see. I'm not sure why they haven't integrated it. Now, many of you have asked me what I would like to see in iOS 18 or future versions of iOS with iOS 19 or iOS 20. And many of the things we've already talked about, I would like to see, but one thing we haven't talked about is AirPods. Once the AirPods connect, if we go into the AirPods menu, I would love to see a software update area, an area that tells us there's an update and then gives us the ability to just quickly tap update and allow them to update immediately. Also, I would like better documentation, not only for AirPods updates, but also iOS updates. Just saying bug fixes and security updates to me is kind of lazy with documentation, and it really should explain every single thing they've updated, unless it's a security concern with the security updates, which they already do sometimes. So the bug updates, I would love to know specifically what they've fixed. That not only helps us, but also helps Apple know whether or not things have been resolved. Additionally, I'd like to see things updated with the battery settings. So if we go back into settings, then we scroll down to battery. Under battery, battery health and charging, I've talked about this before. I would like to see the percentage removed in favor of maybe a stoplight system that says, it's good, it's getting worn down, it's time to replace. And then if you really want to see a percentage, you could go into that afterward. I think the percentage gives way too many people anxiety, and I would like better explanations of what it actually is, as that's the number one question I get asked. Is it okay that it drops to 99% or below? When should I replace my battery? And so on. Additionally, in battery, I would like to see them change the settings where they show the actual battery life. And the reason I say this is this also includes 24 hours of time, and it really shouldn't. It should just include since last charged. Tell us how much battery life we have since last charge and what that battery life was. So if we charge to 100%, tell me what it's been since that point. Once I plug it back in, it starts over again and tells me another battery update. The same would be true with standby. Standby counts screen active time as well, and it really shouldn't because you're already charging or plugged in. So that's something that I would like to see removed and maybe categorized differently. Also, the same is true with system data. If we go into general, 
Then we go to iPhone storage, let it load for a moment. System data oftentimes takes up a lot of storage for people. And while this is typically used as cache system data, this is something that Apple really needs to clarify as many people don't like that something's using either six gigabytes or sometimes 80 gigabytes. This is mostly used as cache and doesn't interfere with the operation. It's basically making iOS run better and sort of offloads the storage if needed and things like that. So that's something that you typically don't need to worry about, but they should explain a little bit better. Additionally, I'd like to see a more customizable action button on future iPhones, not just one pre button press to turn on the flashlight, but maybe a double press or a triple press. So triple press it does another action. Double press does something else. We already have that with the power sleep wake button with accessibility options. I'd like to see it added to the action button. So lots of great suggestions in this video, lots of things I would like to see. And of course, there's a whole other host of things we could add to iPad as well. Let me know if you'd like to see that video in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.